Hi duckies, hi duckies, how are you? I hope you're well. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've not I've done a video. It's been about three weeks or so, four weeks, three weeks since my last video and it was on the Vanica cream. I am going to do another one on the HRT and the medication I take and the injection I'll be taking, but I wanted to do this vlog first. Now, this vlog is basically about the fallout from Brexit. Now, if you wanted a more in-depth discussion on the Brexit issue and the fallout, I'm going to point you in the direction of my podcast, uh, freshbrewpodcast.co.uk. It's freshbrewpodcast.co.uk, freshbrewpodcast.co.uk. And on that podcast, me and producer Matt discuss the fallout from Brexit from our bunker in the Meon and Hamble Valley. Whoa. And it's basically our, our thoughts on the initial fallout from the Brexit about the, the podcast is episode 84 and it was done uh, not Monday, just gone the Monday before. Today is the, um, I think it's the 7th, it's the 7th of July 2016 today. So the podcast was done not, was done not last Monday, the Monday gone, but the Monday before that. So it's about just over a week old. So I'm going to point you in the direction of that podcast to get a more in-depth discussion on the podcast. So freshbrewpodcast.co.uk. It's freshbrewpodcast.co.uk. And on that podcast, we have more of a discussion about the fallout and our initial thoughts on it. Now, what I wanted to do with this vlog is just basically say, look, we've had the referendum. It's not how I thought it would go. I was convinced it was going to be Remain. And I thought it would be like 52% for Remain and 48% for Leave. But it's the other way around. It's 52% for Leave and it's 48% for Remain, give or take a percentage point. I wasn't expecting that. doesn't matter how I voted, but I wasn't expecting that. I, I was quite surprised. I stayed up all night with a couple of my friends and we watched the results as they came in. And we were really surprised at how it went. Um, they were shocked. I was a bit miffed as to how it went because I was convinced it would be for for Remain, but it wasn't. I think now, as I say in the podcast, we need to come together. We need to put outside the hate that's been brewing up in, in some parts of this country who some people have thought, well, I, I want to say this. The majority of my family were for Remain, but my friends were divided straight down the middle. Some were for Leave, some were for Remain, and that includes my trans friends. Half my trans friends were for Leave, half my trans friends were for Remain. So let's not get this idea that the whole entire LGBT society was voting to Remain in the UK. That's not my ex Remain in the EU. That's not my experience uh, here in Southampton. And Southampton overwhelmingly voted to leave the European Union and it was the ethnic vote that tipped it in Southampton which I don't know what that says but it would appear that the ethnic vote in Southampton that was outside that came from outside of the UK uh, outside of the European Union were for leave which I found very interesting I was expecting Southampton which is a very Labour city I was expecting Southampton to be a Remain city but it was nearly 60 60 40 60 yeah, about 60-40 for leave. So I was a bit, I was surprised about that as well. I was also surprised that David Cameron resigned so quickly. So I'm not going to say I'm, I'll be surprised if such and such happens because everything has surprised me over this referendum. Now, if you voted to leave because of racism, because you don't like people who are predominantly of Muslim is Arab extraction coming to the UK. You need to go away and look at a map because that's not going to affect it. Now, some people I knew who voted to leave didn't vote on the grounds of immigration. They voted because they voted to leave because of it was the European. They saw the European Union as corporate, elitist, bureaucratic, and undemocratic, and also to give the government and austerity a good kick in. 
So it's not my experience from my Leave friends that they voted on the grounds of immigration. I know some people in the city did, I know some people in the country did, and I know some of them have felt emboldened to become racist and provocative in the, in the, country, in the country as a whole. I've seen some footage of people being abused on a tram in Manchester. It was just horrific. But we need to accept that what's going to happen now is if we leave the European Union as we are, we're not, I, I'm going to say I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised <laughs> if we stayed out of the single market. I think we're going to stay in the single market and that means we will still have free movement. So if you voted on the grounds of racism, you need your bloody head examined because that's not, it's on the grounds of immigration, you need your head examined because it's nothing to do with that. It was to do with leaving the European Union for the reasons I gave that my friends who voted to leave have given me. So if you voted to leave on the grounds of racism because you're racist fundamentally over immigration, because you are, because that's 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 my th th thoughts. The, the people who voted to leave on the grounds of immigration were just being racist on the whole. And you're going to get nowhere because no, we're not going to leave the single market. We're probably going to stay in the single market. And that means we will still have free movement. So there will still be immigrants coming in. Plus, immigration from outside the European Union runs into the hundreds of thousands. So it wouldn't matter if we just stopped all EU migrants coming to the country to work. We would still have hundreds of thousands of refugees and migrants from all over the world and the Commonwealth coming here. So it's it's... If you voted on the grounds of immigration, you're going to be sorely, sorely, sorely disappointed. So putting that to one side, those are my thoughts on the immigration issue. I was a bit nervous about doing this vlog because I didn't know quite what to say to you all uh, about my thoughts and feelings. I did say that I was going to tell you how I voted, but I don't, I'm not going to. I'm going to keep that quiet and to myself. That my friends, some of my friends and family know how I, vo I voted, but I'm not going to tell you how I voted. It doesn't really matter. To, on the whole, I don't think it does. If you want to know, come and see me and I'll tell you personally face to face. But I'm not going to tell you over the wonders of the internet because that's for my, that's me personally. I'm going to keep that private. We need to come together now. The country is not in the mess that everybody thought it would. Only the political institutions to some degree are in a mess. We've had the coup in Labour, but everybody prophesied that that was going to happen after the EU vote. We've had the leadership election in the Tory party and we're down to two candidates now, both women. So that's, that's a good plus. Uh, I like that. I'm not going to vote Tory ever. I, I'm never going to vote Tory. It doesn't matter what they do. I'm never going to vote Tory for my own personal reasons. But it's good that it's two women fronting the candidacies for the Tory leadership and the Prime Ministership. So that's positive. Although a lot of people I can hear shouting over the internet are going, what about that, Ger? I don't think Theresa May or Andrea Lebson are a Thatcher. I know the media are trying to portray Andrea Lebson as a Thatcher, but I, I don't think she is. Questionable on her LGBT rights issues. That's questionable. But Theresa May, I think I wouldn't be surprised. Again, I'm going to say it again. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't win, but it's all up to the members in the, in the country now. About just over 125,000 members of the Tory party will now come together and vote for the MPs' choices. The Labour Party is in disarray. The, the members of the Labour Party have rebelled against Jeremy Corbyn. They want him out. But the membership of the party, about 75% or so I've seen on Twitter recently of some, um, of some constituencies are saying that they will support Corbyn. So it's a question of what do you believe? I think the Labour MPs are foolish in what they've done because it's just made the party look disunited and nobody votes for disunited parties as we saw with the major government in 1997 over Europe. No one votes for disunited parties. It's thank God Nigel Farage has gone. Thank God he has gone. He ran a extremely racist campaign in the referendum vote. 
it was horrendous. Standing outside in front of that poster with the ref refugee stream over the Slovakian border was just just horrendous. Just just reminded me of the stuff that the Nazis used to put out about the Jews. It was just horrendous, just absolutely horrendous, and he shouldn't have done it, and it was despicable of him to do it, so I'm glad he's gone. Who will take over? It's up in the air, no one knows. No one's really talking about it on the news, it's all gone quiet, so I don't know who's going to take over from him. The other parties are safe and sure, are secure. It would be interesting to see if there is going to be another referendum in Scotland. I'm inclined to think if we stayed in the single, mar single market... And Scotland would be happy with that, but I don't know. If they want to go, then go. Uh, it's my ancestral, it's my father's ancestral lands. It's where his ancestors going back centuries came from. Their Scottish ancestry. I would be upset if they go because I regard myself as British because my ancestors have come from all corners of the United Kingdom to where we find ourselves now. And I would be very upset if Scotland... Well, well, uh, but, I, yeah, I would be upset if Scotland left the Union. But it wouldn't surprise me and it wouldn't be something that would bother me too much because I've sort of got used to the idea that Scotland would eventually vote for independence. But I would be upset in the short term and it would be something that I would find a bit upsetting. So now we need to come together. The markets have recovered but the pound is still 128 to the dollar. It's still low. It's good for our exports. It's good for foreigners and overseas people coming to the country to spend their money over here as tourists. But it's not very good if you want to go abroad and change your money. That's not very good. So I've got some friends who are going abroad and they're not happy about that. And I've got some friends whose parents have got timeshares and they're not very happy about it either. Although I believe they voted to leave, but I might be wrong. We need to all come together now. We've got a chance of building a new country for ourselves. A new path to a new future for Britain. And we need to come together and make it happen. I'm hoping that whoever becomes the leader of the Conservative Party and the next Prime Minister will bring everybody in Westminster and everybody across the country together to sort out where we go from here. I'm not sure when Article 50 will be enacted. It might be this year, it might be next year. It depends on who is elected leader of the Conservative Party and the next Prime Minister. But we need to come together. This is what I say in the, in the podcast, freshbrewpodcast.co.uk. It is a good podcast episode 84 we need to come together we need to come together and sort out the problems that we have we need to come together to sort out the future that we're going to build for ourselves we have a great opportunity here to make a new of ourselves to renew our institutions to renew our country to renew our laws to renew our un well our quasi unwritten constitution so put the hate away Abandon the hate. It's not necessary. You, 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 you're just misguided. There's no need for the hate. Let's come together. Let's build a new future for ourselves. And let's hopefully achieve something greater in the future than we've had in the past so far. I'm hoping that the country will sort itself out. And I'm hoping that we will rise up and become a new country and new again. I'm sorry this vlog is a bit like it is but I wasn't sure what to say or how to put my feelings across but there we have it that's my vlog those are my thoughts if you want more on my thoughts on the on the referendum go to freshbrewpodcast.co.uk episode 84 and you'll hear my views on there thanks duckies for listening and I'll see you soon bye oh it doesn't work I'll do it again <laughs> bye guys <laughs>